Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I will continue the rules of natural deduction, but focusing more on the double negation part. Okay, let's consider this example. It is not true that it doesn't rain. So we have two knots that I have circled here, right? If you think about it, it's just same as it rains. So what are the rules of double negation? The first rule is double negation elimination. Suppose you have some variable pi. Pi denotes in this case it rains, right? So if you apply not, it doesn't rain. And then you apply one more not. So it is not true that it doesn't rain. So that's the premise. The conclusion is same as pi. As you can see here, it is not true it doesn't rain. It's same as it rains. So we can safely eliminate double negation. So that's the first rule. Double negation can be eliminated. You see here, we, we put double not and then E. E stands for elimination. Similarly, if we have some premise, you can introduce double not to that premise because it's same as the original premise. So this is called double negation introduction. Suppose you have a statement, it rains, it's same as it is not true that it doesn't rain. So in this case, we are applying rule two. Suppose you are going from this direction to this direction. We are applying rule two. If you go this direction, you're applying rule one, right? This is rule one because we're eliminating knots in this direction. If you go this direction, we are introducing knots. Okay, these are the two foundational rules for double negation. Let's do an exercise, apply this double negation to solve a particular problem to get this idea across. The exercise problem is as follows. I need to solve P comma, comma means and not not Q R, Q and R, right? That's my premise. The conclusion is not P and R. You can manually convince yourself this is true with not not. With the P, we can introduce double not. That's the double not introduction rule we just learned. So we can get double not P. Because of the double not, we can eliminate double knots. So you get Q and R. From Q and R, we can extract R. Therefore, we can combine the double not P and R to convince ourselves this is correct. But we will use a computer to verify our logical reasoning is correct. So that's what we are going to do in this proof logic. And we can check the conclusion is correct by applying the proof rules. Okay. So first we need to create a problem. The problem is P comma. So in this tool, we can uh, use not in multiple ways. We can use this tilde symbol that is not. So I'm going to use tilde symbol. It will automatically change for us. Q and R. It only allows uppercase letters for the variables. That's the reason I have to do like this. All right. So conclusion is not not P and R. So that's the conclusion. So we have created a problem. So the very first thing we need to do is create a new line. Okay, I'm going to uh, introduce the double knots, right? In this tool, there is no double knot introduction uh, rule. So I have to follow one more step to get there. Let's create new proofs, right? This is subproof. Create a subproof. I'll make a knot P and then I will add a new line. So since P is true, if I introduce knot P, of course we get false. Okay, false can be denoted using this hash symbol for false. So I get false. Why? Because I have introduced just one knot using the statements one and three. I can conclude because statement one says P, statement three says not P. That cannot be true, right? You can't have P and not P satisfied simultaneously. So uh, you get false. Okay, and now we create one more line. What can we say now? We can say safely that this is not not P because if you if you think about it, we have P and we have not P, we arrived at a false statement. If we have a not P and we arrive at false statement, what does it tell you? It means our assumption is wrong. Only if the assumption is wrong, we get wrong conclusions. So somewhere along the reasoning, we made a mistake. So therefore, line number three is wrong. So we have to negate line number three. That's the reason I put not on P. And the rule for this is a not introduction. I'm introducing a not through line numbers three and four. So we can check proof how we are doing so far. No errors so far. We are on track. So what did we achieve so far? We achieved one small thing. We were able to get the not not P part. So let me explain how. We started with P and not not Q and R. We create a sub proof. That is the meaning of this little vertical line here. We create a sub proof. Let's assume we have not P. Okay. But if we combine line number one and three, we get an, a false statement. Okay.
Okay. Why do we get the false statement? Because our assumption here is wrong. So we had a wrong assumption. Okay. We had not P here. That means this must be wrong. So it is not the case not P. That's the reason why we were able to introduce uh, not. Okay. So we got double not P part. Now the rest is simple. Yeah. Now I will just quickly go ahead and add a new line. We do know that double not can be eliminated. The tool allows us to do double not elimination. So I can just go ahead and put this with the rule being double not elimination from line number two. And now from line number six, I can eliminate one of the components of an understatement because when understatement is true, each component must be true. So I'm applying the rules of deduction we learned for under elimination on line number six. And now I can combine line number five and seven because we know five is true and seven is true. Therefore, combination is also true. So this is called and introduction from line number five and line number seven. So let's see whether the proof is acceptable so far. Yeah, we're done. Congratulations, the proof is correct.